I can show you hundreds of success stories of folks that were massively burnt out and living out of alignment from their values that have become successful grant writers. And it's not because they became grant writers. It's because they learned new skills to stop that cycle of burnout. So in today's video, we're going to be diving all into the top seven ways that I recommend avoiding burnout in the career of grant writing. All right, with that, let's hit it. Okay, so why do we even look at new careers in the first place? It's probably because we're burned out, we're bored, we're not fulfilled, right? We don't like our work environment. Maybe we have kind of lousy or even worse than that, toxic coworkers. I was definitely in that camp. In a traditional global consulting firm, I was so overworked and overworking myself and I left and I pledged I am never touching another grant again. Well, never say never. I also said I would never own a Subaru and I bought one of those, so here we are. I left to start this completely different company and when I saw it wasn't going anywhere, I really realized, okay, I do know how to write grants, but I'm going to cautiously do this. So it's on my own terms. So I was absolutely taking off from 1230 to 230 or even three in the afternoon every day. So I could get outside and bike or ski because in Alaska, that's when we have some sunshine in the winter. Okay. That's very important. And it worked. I put the joy back into consulting. I started to build a little team. Then I started to overdo it again because the pandemic hit and I hired seven members from my original course in two weeks and it was chaos. So I hired Alex, who's now my co-founder. She helped me five hours a week to be a project manager and she taught me so many of the important lessons that I'm about to share with you. So let's get into it. The seven ways to avoid burnout in grant writing. Number one, become a boss project manager. So Alex is a very skilled project manager. Up until her entering the picture, I had been managing grants basically in my head on a whiteboard, post-its and yeah, sure, maybe some spreadsheets. And it barely worked for one person, but it definitely fell apart when you had a team of any size, right? So we implemented Asana into our grant writing consulting business. And we built out a ton of templates for like grant application preparation, client onboarding, all of that, which by the way, we provide to you as a member of the Global Grant Writing Collective. But learning actually how to project manage is a technical skill. And it is the backbone of your success as a grant writer. Tip number two, learn to set boundaries. Easier said than done, okay? This is coming from the queen of mushy boundaries herself. But grant writers are extra vulnerable to burnout and overworking because we're heart led in the work we do, but you're gonna be greeted routinely with decisions that you have to make about pursuing a grant on an expedited schedule or someone's not getting you material. So then are you the one that has to stay up late to finish because their tardiness? Here's what I've had to learn the hard way. You teach people how to treat you. Did you catch that? You teach people how to treat you. Boundary setting is also a skill and it's one that you can learn. So I want you to post your sticky situation in the community group and I want a squad to just jump in there. We're gonna cheerlead, rescue you to to hold the line on your boundary. And I'm increasingly, frankly, looking into and pursuing mindset work to get at the root of why some of us struggle with boundary setting more than others. So recognize that this is a complex topic and we're helping you out with it because it's not easy. Tip number three, charging more. If you are a freelance grant writer and if you don't charge enough for the services you provide, you will burn out. So I had a member in the collective join one year ago. She was at about hundred K in revenue, no team working her butt off. We helped her buy back her time. She built a team. It's four people. She even did her first retreat recently with everybody where they did strategic planning. And she discovered basically before that how upside down her pricing was to not be able to support a team of that size. So we overhauled her pricing and she's going to hit 480 K in revenue at the end of the year. So that's about 14 months later from when she joined us. And she's paying herself a salary of 10,000 a month. She's become the primary breadwinner in her family. And and now I've got her eyes set on like, let's keep simplifying pricing, let's simplify your client load, and let's get you to a million in revenue. All while providing incredible jobs for other women that are coming out of these lousy environments and making a huge difference in her community. She's super soul led. Number four, celebrate wins. Here's another important lesson Alex taught me. When our team had a big grant win, she would ship the lead grant writer several pints of ice cream. Or once we met with this local grant writer, who was in Alaska and I found this unicorn ceramic wind up thing at the thrift store and we turned it into a ward and put stickers on it and gave it to her. So that is a core value around here where we have literally a wins and gratitude channel in the community group so that when you post a win, whatever it is, winning a grant, doing your informational interviews, managing a boundary, you can count on somebody to always ask like, hey, 
how are you celebrating? People are very well trained now in literally even saying themselves, like naming it, and this is how I'm celebrating. And it doesn't have to cost anything. It can be, I'm gonna do a camp out with my kids, or I'm gonna go take a walk in the park, or go treat yourself to that fancy coffee, right? So there's a number of things you can do to celebrate wins and build that routine. Trust me, I've had to build the skill too as someone that was always just looking to get to the next thing. Number five, practice soul care daily. And while we're on the topic of values around here and how they become habit, let's talk about soul care. So. I see you, you're always putting everyone else ahead of yourself. You might've had a habit of doing this for years and even decades. And along the way, we forget how to fill our own cup first. And it doesn't have to mean a massage and spa day, okay? Soul care can be five minutes of breath work in the morning, right? It is giving yourself permission to take a nap and not feel guilty about it. It is seeing a friend for coffee. It is curling up on the couch with a great book. It's whatever gives you energy and restores your batteries. So just recognize that this is actually pretty revolutionary in a culture that does nothing but overwork. And if you want to make darn sure that you're not gonna be living in the burnout quarter, we gotta make sure that we are resting and exercising self-care, which we call soul care. Tip number six, build a squad. Especially when you're working a full-time job and you're launching a new career as a grant writer, you are in the double time and it is a window of suck okay there is no way to sugarcoat it the only way you're going to get out of this chain of like running two paths in parallel is by charging more and everything else that we just talked about of course but you also prevent burnout before you even like get to your dreams by having a squad. So I'm borrowing that language from my favorite book, We Should All Be Millionaires by Rachel Rogers. But the idea is that when you're in that valley of despair, you're low, you're not taking action, you're not moving forward. It's having that pure group that can help you move forward 10 times faster than relying on this flimsy thing called willpower. <laughs> it's very powerful to be in a space with others that get you and they want what you want. And I actually feel most fully expressed as myself, like Meredith Noble, 100% level 10, when I'm in coaching calls and in our community group. It is a safe space where we can be unapologetically ourselves. And it's really important you find environments that allow you to express yourself in that way. Tip number seven, accept there will be false peaks. So what do I mean by that? You might join the collective because you wanna become a grant writer and launch a new career. What you either consciously or do not fully consciously recognize right now is that you're actually starting on this massive journey of transformation. I guess this is like a little cliche, but we even have a member that's lost literally over 150 pounds since getting into this new career. She is even going to Mexico for like a skin surgery. She lives in somewhere else. And the only reason she's even able to afford this like best doctor in class is because of the profit in her consulting business. And she's told us like, there's no way any of this would happen or the schedule flexibility if she did not have the roadmap to building that kind of a lifestyle. She wouldn't have done it as an accountant. So I know transformation as a weight loss is a little bit like cliche, but really it's about breaking up old habits by going inward to finally get at the root of why we are the way we are and what beliefs are holding us back and how to upgrade those to have completely different life outcomes. It's tough work, my friends. Okay. I'm in it with you, like in the thick of it. And sometimes you're going to feel like the boss you are on the top of Denali. And then other times there is going to be false peaks where it's just all part of this journey where you realize that, okay, I'm becoming this next version of me. And maybe I just like burned out a little bit, but I know what to do to get myself back on track. So in review, your top seven tips for avoiding burnout are one, become a boss project manager, two, learn to set boundaries, three, charge more, a lot more, four, celebrate wins, five, practice soul care daily, six, build a squad, and seven, accept that there will be false peaks. So if you are thinking about getting into grant writing, check out the training that is linked below on how you land paid clients. If you have an existing consulting business already and you're in that burnout phase, I want you to watch this other training I built for you addressing specifically how we get you out of that pain cave. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see more of because I literally read every single comment. We'll take it from there. All right. With that, talk to you later.